Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. And we're gonna pick up where we left off from the last Tailwind episode. So what I didn't show you guys was where I got the SVG. So Tailwind kind of created their own kind of icons here and they're called hero icons. And if we click on the link, it goes to here. Now I just looked for like arrows here and I wanted a downward facing arrow. So I chose something like this and I just copied this. If you click on this link, it'll copy the SVG or you could have whatever you want. Like it could be double arrows or something. And once you copy that, then I went over here and I added this class and I said, look, I want it to be as a specific size and width. And then I want it to have a margin left of one. Okay. So this could be replaced with anything. And I just kind of like formatted it so you guys can see this a little bit easier. Now that was a lot. And it probably took a little bit of time to kind of walk through this. And this is a pretty big example. Like this wasn't just something that was fairly small, like we're building a button or we're just building this one off thing. So this is like, uh, you know, pretty real world, except for all of the um, responsive things, I would spend more time, you know, look at some of the duplication that may be here and just kind of like narrow it down and get it a little more responsive and get that set up. But overall, this is how you would kind of go through it. This is how I would go through it and kind of build something out like this. Um, you know, you may not want to have these arbitrary values here. And Tailwind's interesting because you end up having these classes and they're very long and there's a lot of lengthy classes. So as you're making these things, it can be, um, you know, uh, just really huge. So for instance, I could do something like this. I could create a class and I could just call this article, right? So here we are. And it's a little bit like CSS. And then I would just, you know, use this directive at apply, and then I would apply everything that I wanted to apply to this thing. So whenever I just type this word article, all this becomes just that. So that's pretty nice when you think about it. So if I was to go down to here and I'm at the article, you know, area, I delete all of this, you know, lengthy text and I just say article and that, that'd be useful if I had a bunch of things that were like pretty repetitive. You start to get a code smell, it starts to repeat and they just, you know, they're all the same. So if I had more articles or more things like this, and then I would just save this out. And if I jump back over to my browser and I refresh, like nothing changes. It's exactly the same, right? And I can go here and clean this up and make this as, you know, as verbose or whatever, I or as, you know, refined as much as I wanted to. So like, keep that in mind. I know it looks like there's a lot, but there's a lot of things that Tailwind, you know, brings to the table. And at the end of the day, it's still CSS, but, you know, it allows you to kind of look at it a different way and kind of like, you know, add CSS in line and kind of like style your attributes and your elements, I should say, and get everything looking the way you want. So we could repeat this process for, you know, a super lengthy one, like the buttons. We will cut this and we'll just generically call it button. And I'll type in button and I will do that. Let's apply this directive and then make sure I'd close this. So if I had buttons that were all this style and I needed to repeat this for whatever reason, uh, I could do that as well. I could say, you know, I don't know, BTN dash A. So for the anchor button or something. And, and this could be whatever you want once again, right? And I can go to this thing here, find this lengthy bit of Tailwind CSS, and I could type in BTN-A, and then apply this, and then save that. And then now I jump back to the HTML that I'm working with. And I've really just trimmed this up a lot. I mean, you could do this for all this, and before you know it, you could have one word style classes for this thing. At the end of the day, if we refresh, it's still the same, nothing changes. Okay. The only thing that is different is if we actually inspect this and we go into, let's say anchor tag, it just got a simple class of just BTNA, but these are all the things that are applied to it. So if I actually check the class itself, it says BTNA, but if I actually check what's actually underneath that, this is what I've done. And this is relatively CSS at the end of the day. So I hope you guys learned a lot from that. I know I kind of went through it in an awkward kind of just like, you know, not typing this out verbatim because it's a very big thing. And, you know, hope you got to understand how something like this is built. I'll try to leave a reference to the repo or some source that you guys can download this and check it out and fiddle with it yourself. And the images were just something that I created uh, for a project that I was working on. So you can like create your own images and stuff like that. So they're all like, it's all up to you, but the process of building and scaffolding this thing and then adding the appropriate styles 
This is how you can build something that's very custom and unique using Tailwind CSS. So don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts below, hit the notification bell. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care until next time.